So, now we are going to analyze the inverting amplifier okay? and uh, the way we will do it is will be very much similar to the non inverting one. So, if you have if you understand the previous one uh, thoroughly and if you do this uh, next one which is inverting amplifier on your own that will be highly pleasing. I will be very happy if you do that on your own without watching uh, this uh, video, uh, but I will also do it in this video. Okay. So, this is the circuit for the inverting amplifier. It has one input V1, one output VO. VP is connected to ground. I just have copied it uh, from from here. Okay. Uh, we have said how to remember these circuits before. Fine. But now, once again here, uh, the question that we will ask is given V1, if V1 is given, VO output is how much? How to find VO? Okay. Uh, how to find it? We need the static characteristic. So, that is the input output relationship. So, where is that? Uh, let me draw it. This is the static characteristic output versus input. Input is what? Vp minus Vn. This is how we draw it. And then this is the static characteristic where this point is V supply. V supply is the power supply and the minus power supply. This is minus V sub. Okay. And so this is the static characteristic. Now to find VO, we need both VP and VN. Now VP, VP is known, VP is 0. Okay. So as before, to find VO, we need V. P and V n. Now, V p is equal to 0 because this is connected to ground, but V n is how much? Do we know V n? Uh, not directly, but we know something about V n. So, it is once again a potential divider rule, kind of potential divider rule. This point is at V o, this point is at V 1 no current is getting uh, out from this branch. Therefore, V n will be somewhere in between V 1 and V o, okay? somewhere in between V 1 and V o, some sort of average. Okay? And we can do it quickly if you know something like Milman's theorem. If you do not know, we can still do it. So, uh, let us find this current I, which is flowing like this. So, from here to th here. So, this if this current is I, how much is I? I is nothing but V o, this is at V o, this is V 1 minus V 1 divided by R 1 plus R 2. So, this is I and then we can write uh, V n, V n is here. So, this will be V 1 plus this drop, V 1 plus the drop is R 1 I. So, this we, we can write V 1 plus R 1 multiplied by this factor V o minus V 1 by R 1 plus R 2 and then this we can write as uh, R 1 plus R R 1 plus R 2 times V 1 minus V 1 okay, plus R 1 V o whole divided by R 1 plus R 2, this becomes there is R 1, R 1 V 1. So, this and this will cancel. So, we have R 2 V 1 plus R 1 V O 
divided by r1 plus r2 here divided by r1 plus r2 this is equal to vn so this is one relationship we have between vn and vo because v1 is known you can also write this as by multiplying everything with r1 r2 so let's write it this way r1 plus r2 multiplied by vn okay and minus r2 v1 this will be equal to r1 vo or you can jump a step and divide this by r1 by r1 so this is the relationship between vo and vn please uh, verify my calculation if i have made any mistake please tell me okay so this is one relationship between vo and vn okay so we have two unknowns vn and v vn and uh, v o okay uh, to find v o we need as we have already said to find v o we need v p and v n and here also you see to find v n it depends on v o so it is once again a chicken and egg problem and so we have two relationships we will have two relationship now this is this is uh, this you called call relation one between v o and v n and another relation is here the static characteristic okay so this is relation two okay so we will also have two relations so we can solve for v n and v o okay now once again so i have just copied this diagrams from the previous page so that we can continue now and this is the relationship between v o and v n which is coming from this so this is coming from the external circuit okay so this relationship let me write here uh, this is coming from external circuit and this is from op amps property op amp okay okay so now once again we will draw two curves expressing this relationship and this together but now we know that vp is equal to 0 and this vp is equal to 0 therefore this is same as minus vn so in this curve x axis is same as minus vn since vp is equal to 0 now if i want to make this minus vn to plus vn what i have to do is simply switch or swap this uh, I mean, uh, or make a mirror image of this diagram like this so this is a mirror image okay so this is vn versus output because vp is zero and the second relationship the other relationship between vo and vn is like this so you see vo is vn times something minus uh, v minus something v1 is known so this is known this this v1 is given okay so this is like y is mx minus c y is mx minus c so how can we draw that y is mx minus c this will be a straight line with positive slope 
and with intercept so at at vn equal to 0 vo will be negative so it will start from a negative intercept so this this will be somewhat like this so this is relation 1 so this is relation 1 this is relation 2 and what is the solution? The solution is at the intersection which is here. Okay. So, the solution is just this. So, now for an ideal of them this line is almost vertical right so this almost goes like uh, along the y axis so for an ideal op amp you, you can say that at solution at this point at solution the value of vn will be almost zero vn is almost zero very close to 0 okay. and then what is V o? Then V o okay. if V n is 0 then in this equation let us put V n equal to 0 then we will have this is equal to minus R 2 by R 1 times V 1 because this is 0 V n this term is 0 because V n is 0. Okay. So, this is the solution. So, this is the answer. So, the question was what will be the output? This is the answer and you see the output is input times a negative factor. That is why we call it an inverting amplifier because it uh, the output is always of opposite sign from the input. Okay. Okay. So, um, yes okay. and then okay, what is next? So, next let us see how the output will change if we change the input. Okay. So, if we change the input, what is input? This is input. Input is V 1. So, if we change input, this term will change. This will remain same. So, in that means this relationship which is depicted here this will change its position. How will it change? This will change, uh, this factor will change. So, the y intercept will change, slope will remain same. Okay? So, therefore, if I change v 1, then this curve is going to move like this ok. So, then this curve is going to move like this up or down y intercept is going to change. Therefore, but you observe that V n. So, at the solution V n is going to remain almost 0 ok because this line is almost vertical ok. So, V n is going to remain 0 and this will also be true. So, this is how the solution varies as you vary the input. Now, say if you make uh, V 1 too much high, if V 1 is too much high then this will be too much negative. So, this will go down like this and then you see the solution will not be here, the solution will be here at the saturation region, it will not be here, it will be here and then V n will not be equal to 0, V n will be minus uh, sorry V n will be this and output will be minus V sub. Similarly, if you make V 1 too much negative then this term will be too much positive. So, then this will go up 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 ok up to this V n will be 0, uh, but beyond that the solution will be here, will no longer be on this axis, will be here. 
okay so this is how it moves let me keep it here this is for some value of v1 positive view okay so this is how input and output changes now uh, okay once again observe vn is almost equal to 0 which is same as vp vp is 0 so vn and vp are almost same okay this is once again is virtual sorting so that means virtual sorting is also true for this circuit which is uh, inverting amplifier but once again let me tell you this is not true for only the op amp if we do not have all these connections uh, vp and vn will not be same it will not be same for all circuits it will not be same for only op amp once again this is a property of this circuit not of the op amp this is a property of this circuit of this circuit but not in general ok so that is uh, virtual sorting um, ok so next we will try to do the same analysis for uh, difference amplifier but I will request you that if you have understood uh, how to do it for inverting and non inverting amplifiers as we have uh, done in the last two uh, talks last two classes uh, then then you should try it on your own for the difference amplifier and if you can do it it, it will be really a fun thank you